Okay, so um, to finish up on some of our discussion of the DeGroote model, let's ask an, a question now of, of sort of applying this and understanding when it is that a society of people who are updating in this sort of just weighted average uh, method are actually going to come to b a consensus which is accurate, right? So when is it that their beliefs will actually be reasonably um, accurate beliefs? Um, so information aggregation in this setting. So is the consensus that they're going to come to accurate? Um, so we're going to have to put some structure on this. And, and actually this question, uh, the reason I originally became interested in the DeGroote model was out of conversations with a student, a former student of mine, Ben Golub, and we started asking the question of when was it that uh, people's beliefs would actually um, converge to the right sort of thing, even if they were acting in a fairly simple form. And uh, so how does this depend on network structure? How does it depend on the influence? How does it relate to speed of convergence? There's a whole series of questions we can ask here. And we'll just take a quick look at how the, this works in the context of the DeGroote model. And let's suppose that there's a, a true state um, out there which we'll call mu. So this nature is, uh, you know, for instance, there's really some probability that there's going to be global warming. And that's uh, something that's, that's true and it's out there. And each person's belief at time zero is, is, uh, is different from the true belief. So there's some true number out there, and uh, everybody has some error. And um, the error, uh, what we're going to make sure of is that the errors of different individuals have zero mean and finite variance. Okay, and, and if you want to keep all these things in zero one, you can do that if you like. They don't have to be in zero one. You can keep them in zero one by by making sure that the variance is actually bounded, so that uh, um, you, you you can't have your belief differ from uh, mu by so that beliefs don't go outside of zero one. But that's actually not necessary for this analysis. Okay, so we've got the beliefs. Um, everybody has some error, and now we run into group model. And so what we'd like to have is if people keep talking to themselves, uh, talking to different individuals, um, it would be nice if the, the uh, situation eventually converged to a true mu, so that by talking to people we would actually really learn what the true mu was. And here we can allow these, these epsilon i's to have different variances across individuals, um, but let's make sure that they're uh, independent conditional on mu. So each the, the errors that one person makes, so one person might be, have a high belief, another person has a low belief. So people are making errors, but those errors aren't correlated. Okay, so let's consider li large societies. So we want to ask when is the crowd going to be wise? So when is it when they get together and talk through a network that they're actually going to come to a, a reasonably accurate mu? So what we want is we want a situation where the probability that the limit um, as we get uh, uh, look at the limiting beliefs o over time compared to mu, the probability that that's differing by more than some delta um, vanishes in large societies. Okay, so there's a bunch of quantifiers here, so we're looking at the limit belief, and we want to make sure that uh, the limit belief being bigger than some delta, that vanishes, and we want to do that as a society becomes large. Okay, so larger and larger societies, when is it that they're going to be accurate? Okay, so if, obviously if there's only two individuals and we've only got two signals, then uh, if we're each making an error, even an average of those two errors isn't going to give us a very accurate uh, number. Um, so to get accuracy when people are making errors, we're going to have to average over a large number. But then the question is, when is it that the, that the overall society can average in a, in a useful manner? Okay. So um, one thing that's very useful is uh, a, a variation on a weak law of large numbers. You can prove this easily using Chebyshev's inequality. Um, so let's, let's consider a situation where all these in errors are independent. So if a bunch of people are making independent errors. Um, each person has a zero mean in their error, so they're either above or below. Um, but in expectation, they have a, a zero, so they're centered at, at zero. And they each have finite variance, so that nobody's infinitely uh, ignorant. Um, then when we look at, let's suppose that we were doing some influences, whatever those influences are. So society N has a, a vector S1 through Sn. So we look at those, we'll call those the SINs. 
right? So in society N, we've got an S1 through SN, and we have a different one for when we add this extra person. So each one of these societies has a vector. Um, oh, the weak law of large numbers tells us that if we look at uh, averaging those errors, so what's going to happen is the influence is going to capture how much of each person's error enters into the overall societal error. The sum of the weights on those errors is going to be zero if and only if the largest influence that anybody has goes to zero. Okay. So if anybody retains influence, then what we're going to do is end up retaining weight on that person's error. Their, their belief is going to be a non-trivial part of the overall society's belief. And so it's going to be necessary that everybody have a, a negligible weight in the limit. So as society aggregates, they have to disperse so that we're putting weight on different individuals. If we keep all listening to the same person, we're going to have inaccuracy. And actually, that's going to be enough. So as long as society spreads it out, given that everybody has finite variance, averaging a bunch of these variables will give us uh, a good answer. So wise crowds occur if and only if the maximum influence vanishes. Okay. So that's a nice, uh, simple result, which then tells us that basically we're going to get convergence if and only if to, to uh, the right belief, if and only if when we look at this in larger and larger societies, each one of these things is tending to zero, right? So we have all the beliefs tending to zero, um, and uh, the max tending to zero. Okay, so what's a sufficient condition for this? Um, suppose that we look at a situation where there's where um, you actually have reciprocal attention. So let's make T not only row stochastic but column stochastic. So everybody gives some weight out, but we also get the same weight in. Everybody is getting somebody's paying attention to them, so that the weight that they have uh, um, out is uh, is is equal. Um, then you would get S equals one over N, right? So that's a situation where T would be wise. So if everybody got weighted as much weight in as they were giving out, we'd be in good shape. Um, so reciprocal trust would be something that would imply um, wisdom. So making sure that the trust that comes into any individual is, is the same as what goes out, that's a very strong condition, though. So generally in society, we're going to have some heterogeneity in terms of overall how much somebody gets paid attention to. And so what's important is that when we're looking at this, there's no single individual that's getting too much of the weight from other individuals who matter, right? So there's, if there was some I that had, uh, for instance, everybody putting weight at least A on them, then their overall influence would be at least A. So there can't be anybody who gets you know, too much attention. So you can't have too strong an opinion leader. That's going to be an obvious condition. If anybody's getting too much weight in, their eventual belief is going to influence society. And so the network's going to have to be that as it becomes larger and larger, um, it can be that you know, each individual is only listening to a few people. So people are getting a lot of weight from a few neighbors. But it can't be that overall they're getting weight from the whole society at a rate of at least A. So if there's anybody who's getting too much weight in, then that's going to be... Uh, detrimental and you won't end up getting um, convergence. Now you can you can generalize these kinds of conditions so in the paper with Ben Golub we give um, more explicit characterizations of the kinds of conditions. You can't have any group that's too influential, you have to have some balance across groups and as long as things work out to be reasonably balanced uh, then you end up with convergence and if not uh, then you can end up with uh, the wrong kinds of beliefs in the limit. Okay, so that takes us through a little bit of uh, understanding the de group model and, and learning convergence and so forth. Um, we'll, we'll wrap up some of our uh, discussion of learning next and then we can start turning to um, games on networks.